Hi friends, good morning. It is six o'clock here on your Friday. We made it to the weekend. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah, I just want to do a little happy dance. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. And meteorologist Thomas Patrick is getting us ready for the day and the weekend ahead. So Thomas, what kind of coat do people need to wear today? Yeah, well, still grab that uh, decently wintry coat. Not like the heaviest jacket in your closet. It's not that cold but it's still in the 30s for this morning. Shouldn't be any worries for any rain or uh, grapple or anything like that for today. In fact, I'm actually surprised that uh, there's a cloud over here by uh, Silver Mountain if you uh, squint hard enough at the screen. No, it should be actually quite sunny overall for today. We're just at 34 degrees, so a little cool out there this morning, but hey, I'll take anything that's above the freezing mark, especially after this week. There's your sunny skies all across the inland Northwest. No threat for showers today. It is just a completely sunny day and as a result will be a bit warmer than it was yesterday. The afternoon hours should see temperatures in the upper 50s. Well, as you wake up this morning, we want to help you prepare for the morning commute as well. This is I-90 near Hamilton. You could see things moving a OK at this hour. But right before this exit further east, of course, exit 238 B at Freya and Thor. That exit is closed as well as the on ramp as they continue to repave that area. So yeah, that's adding a little bit of time to your commute and you probably already know that you need to use Altamont or the exit before it on Sprague. We'll keep you updated if anything changes here on Up With Creme. Breaking news from overnight. Police are investigating a shooting near Shadle Park High School. Prem 2's Brandon T. Jones is live near the school. And Brandon, when we last checked in with you, we saw them take down that crime scene tape. What's the scene like right now? Good morning. Yeah, Tim. Well, yeah, that's the biggest update that we have for you right now is that the scene has been officially cleared out. We've seen those last law enforcement agencies take all of the crime scene taped down. They're officially out of this neighborhood. Uh, we probably understand that the investigation has is continuing, but I think they wanted to get out before school officially began this morning. And not too long ago, we spoke with a neighbor a few moments ago who told us he heard all of the chaos and commotion last night. He said he ran over here in his slippers. It sounded like fireworks, but it was those gunshots that eventually were fired. So what we know is that a man has been hospitalized following a shooting with Spokane police officers. And according to police, this whole incident started as a dispute between the suspect mentioned and a tow truck driver. Officers told us that they said that man who was the suspect pulled out a knife and a gun before firing around. He then fled the scene before police caught up with him near a field at Shadow Park where a baseball game was being played. Around 6.14 14 p.m. officers informed other units that the suspect was running south on foot and within a minute of that officers confirmed shots were fired. Three SPD officers fired their guns. The suspect was struck multiple times and was transported to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Police also say a gun was found on the suspect. As for those officers who fired their guns, they have been placed on administrative leave as the investigation takes place. So also as school gets ready to start up here in a few hours, we have reached out to Spokane Public Schools to see if that investigation impacts the start of school or how Shadow Park is approaching the beginning of this day here. But again, we have seen law enforcement officially clear out of the area. For now, reporting live here in North Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim News. Two U.S. officials are now confirming an Israeli missile hit Iran less than 12 hours ago. The strike follows last weekend's drone and missile attack by Iran against Israel. A senior Israeli official told The Washington Post that the strike was intended to signal to Iran that Israel can attack its territory. Now, as far as the damage goes, The New York Times is reporting Iranian officials say that the strike hit an airbase near the city of Isfahan. That's home to some of Iran's nuclear facilities. Right now, Iran is really working to downplay the Israeli strike, at least publicly. Experts say Iranian leaders do not seem to want to escalate this conflict any further. Uh, that seems to indicate that Iran is seeking to step down off the ledge, minimize uh, the uh, impact of the attack, uh, and perhaps walk back down the escal escalation ladder from here. Officials have been tight-lipped about the location or the extent of the Israeli strike. When reached by CBS News, the Israeli Defense Forces said they had no comment on the attack.
This morning, the family of Kaylee Consalves is reacting to Brian Koberger's alibi for the night of their daughter's murder. She was one of the four University of Idaho students found dead inside a home back in 2022. Koberger's defense team filed the alibi earlier this week, saying he was out driving the night of the murders, which they say he often does to hike, run, or see the stars. The Consalves family attorney wrote in a statement saying, quote, we believe that if this alibi had any weight, it would have been submitted months ago. The defense points to cell phone records to back up the alibi, but a legal analyst with CBS News says that won't be the strongest evidence in court. Cell phone evidence is very difficult if that's the only evidence you have on either side because it's imperfect and because we don't always have our cell phones on us. The Consalves family also says the alibi brings them relief, saying they feel more confident in the prosecution. A trial date still has not been set. The clock is now ticking for victims of last summer's destructive wildfires to register for federal assistance. That deadline is tomorrow, so victims can apply for in person for FEMA assistance and aid from the Small Business Administration. The SBA loans offer up to $500,000 to replace or repair a primary residence, while FEMA aid would provide money for victims to use for temporary housing and repairs on their homes. In the meantime, the in-person recovery centers in Medical Lake and Elk will remain open until April 27th. After that, the help will only be available by applying online. And the town of Malden is now celebrating the groundbreaking of the town's new community center. It's been three and a half years since the Bab Road fire destroyed nearly the entire town of Malden, including its post office and fire station. So yesterday, federal, state and community leaders broke ground on the town's new library, food bank and community center. This comes two months after the town celebrated the ribbon cutting for its new municipal building, which will house the fire station, town hall and post office. Malden's mayor says the building is a huge milestone for the next step in the town's recovery. This is huge because this is the building that people will come in and share events. They will have weddings. They will have funerals and they will just meet to have joy. Now there is still more that needs to be rebuilt, but the town is celebrating this big success right now. Covering Kootenai County this morning, new video shows the moment a sheriff's patrol car was hit, causing the deputy to swerve into a power pole. Take a look. You may remember us first telling you about this story yesterday here on Up With Krem. The deputy and his canine partner were driving towards the intersection of Bowdoin and Avenue and McGuire Road when a driver you see there pulled into the road. The deputy tried to avoid the car and drove off and in, off the road and into that power pole. No one was seriously hurt in the crash. At 6.08, let's take a look at your morning rush for news in less time. A University of Oregon football player faced a judge for the first time yesterday after being charged in a deadly hit and run this week. Prosecutors say 19 year old sophomore Dalen Austin took off after a crash in Eugene. A 46 year old man was killed. Austin was arrested that same night. He's now out of jail on a conditional release and is expected to be back in court in a month. Alaska Airlines is releasing its first quarterly earnings report since that door plug blowout. The company is reporting an adjusted income loss of about $162 million before income tax. That's compared to a $115 million loss in the same period. Alaska received $162 million in initial cash compensation from Boeing to address losses in the first quarter because of the grounding of the 737 MAX. Well, styrofoam takeout containers, coolers, and cups will be banned in Washington State starting on June 1st. The Department of Ecology says it's just too expensive and difficult to recycle these items. Styrofoam also creates more waste, harms wildlife, and releases PFAS into the environment. In the meantime, a new report is showing the plastic bag ban in Washington State is working. The Washington Public Interest Research Group estimates that plastic bag bans eliminate almost 300 single-use plastic bags per person each year. Washington's ban took effect in 2020. Eleven other states have similar bans in place. And that's a look at your morning rush.
610 on the dot weather conditions this morning. Once again, rather cool, could be frosty in a few spots. Not as cold as it was on Wednesday morning. That is definitely when we bottomed out temperature wise in the 20s. It is 30s this time around. Just a handful of spots that are below 30 degrees. Wallace and Colville kind of leading the way in that aspect. But as we look ahead towards the weekend forecast, Saturday looks fantastic. Still cold in the early morning hours, but on Sunday we'll see some early morning showers before it gets windy. Coming up, we're going to detail that cold front as it passes through, but notice that it'll only drop temperatures for a single day on Sunday.